morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Conversations That Count. I am Srili Kapali, Vice Chair of Community Strategy and Engagement for Fairfax GOP and 11th Congressional District. As part of community engagement, I have been introducing to all of you local, statewide, and national organizations that are making difference in the country and bringing in community influencers, candidates, subject matter experts on conversations that count so they can shed light on most important topics that matter to all of us and the communities that we live in. First, let me thank you. We had some technical difficulties as we start off, but I'm glad you kind of stuck with us. This week, I'll be introducing to you one such organization that I treasure the most and the current leader of this organization. The, the organization that I take pride in introducing today is National Federation of Republican Women. National Federation of Republican Women was first founded in 1938 and is the largest grassroots Republicans women organization in the country with tens of thousands of active members in local clubs across this great nation. NFRW empowers women from all backgrounds in the political process and provides a forum for women to serve as leaders in the political, government, and civic arenas by building leaders, energizing communities, and keeping America strong. Today, on Conversations That Count, I have with me Eileen Sobjack, president of the National Federation of Republican Women. Previously, Eileen served on the NFRW Executive Committee in multiple roles. She's NFRW Capital Region. In 2011, she was one of five states presidents nominated for the Ronald Reagan Leadership Award. For her efforts, she was named 2006 Republican of the Year. Over these years, Eileen was, has volunteered her media experience to political and nonprofit groups, giving radio and TV interviews, writing articles and media releases, and organizing press conferences to promote Republican issues. She's a lifetime member of the VFW Auxiliary, served as a trustee in her church, and is a former public school teacher as well, and private teaching consultant. She and her husband raised three active, responsible citizens who along with their spouses and nine children are all Republicans, which is totally unheard of these times. Welcome, Eileen. We are so fortunate and grateful that you took the time on Friday evening to join in conversations that count. Thank you so much. I, it's, it's my honor to be here tonight and to talk about what is close to my heart as well, the NFRW. Thank you, Eileen. Eileen, I know you're a very busy lady managing tens and thousands of uh, Republican clubs. And uh, as I think I briefly mentioned to you before we started this conversation, I belong to Liberty Republican Women's Club. It's a mid-sized club, very empowered young women is what we have. And uh, part of VFRW um, club, again, uh, working with the very empowered leadership uh, community around here. But want, want to get to know you more. How did you start this journey in public life, politics, and policy making? Well, I was always interested in politics. And when I was a young girl, I served on the school council. I enjoyed the courses in government. My dad was an avid historian, but I chose to go into teaching as a career because I'd been a volunteer with special needs children all through high school. And that was another passion of mine. But then as a young mother and a businesswoman, I found myself getting politically involved because it was affecting my children and our business. I started attending school board meetings and rallying parents to stand up for their children. And my like-minded friends and, and myself formed a 501c4, a nonprofit, so they could we could really make a difference. And then my husband and I also lobbied elected officials to protect our business. And we also began getting involved in helping Republican candidates get elected because we realized that without getting the right people elected, we wouldn't be able to change anything. 
Yeah, Eileen, that is a pretty impressive background. Uh, so Eileen, I think for somebody like us that is kind of starting off in uh, the uh, uh, women's clubs, I say, you've served at many levels of county Republican leadership and also as a member of the state, state party executive board. After serving all of that, you became the president. So you obviously have uh, tons of background in leadership. So for your um, efforts, you were also named the 2006 Republican of the Year and you were also elected as a pre committee officers in, uh, since 1988. Wow. That's, a, 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 I, I mean, I say that's a lot of effort you might have put in even at the grassroots levels. So can you talk to me about the efforts that you undertook that made significant impact within the party? And the, one of the reason I asked that question is, as you know, mid um, uh, right now, we are in the middle of the election season. Early voting has already started. November is coming up. There are a lot of precinct committee officers out there. So I want them to kind of understand what kind of efforts that we need to really put out there in order to make significant efforts and impact within the party. Well, it's really important. And being that precinct officer, that's where I started building a stronger Republican base and turning my own precinct around from being um, kind of in the middle to becoming a red precinct. And um, it's just always been a goal to influence and increase the Republican votes. And the Republicans have a message and a platform that resonates with those who believe in individual rights, less government and freedom. And the Republican party represents the people. Our party was started to advance freedom from slavery. It was the Republican party that supported the right of women to vote. And it's the Republican party that stands up for life and the vulnerable. So I started out as a campaign manager and an organizer for volunteers. I love working with people. I love encouraging them to work on campaigns. I love seeing Republicans get elected. And this led to my involvement with the Republican women. So I, I didn't start with Republican women. I started with the Republican party, but the more I learned about the Republican women, the more I realized that it was such an important place because we educate and we empower women in the political process. And um, I, I, was, uh, I was elected president. It was kind of a funny situation. The group, the local club was struggling. They were getting tired. They needed some young, energetic women. So they asked me to run for club president. So I had to dive in and research and find out all I could about our organization and their mission. And the more I read, the more I understood, the more I came to understand that it was very important. The Republican Women is one of the most important grassroots organization in our country. Eileen, it's kind of nice that you share that kind of story because a lot of folks uh, think that people start off in uh, women's clubs and then kind of move on to the Republican Party. But your story is quite different. You started off in the Republican Party and realized that you women uh, women's clubs really needed that backbone and young leaders. So you kind of jumped into it. And I kind of started off that way. I uh, started running for the office. I was active in the party and then realized that women's club needed some help. So started helping out women's club and then kind of became part of the executive board and so on and so forth. I think the more you're passionate about women and uh, wanting to help your own fellow supporting women, you really want to help out the women's clubs. I think it's a kind of a similar empowerment, wanting to help your own uh, women friends. Yeah. So, Eileen, I was actually, I came to Orlando, Florida, when you kind of took the Helen, uh, where you uh, uh, took, uh, did the swearing ceremony and uh, you talked about your goals and you talked about, um, uh, I think the theme of, um, uh, theme of the Federation when you took on the, when you did the swearing ceremony was launching leaders, mm -hmm. uh, if I remember it right. So can you talk to me about what are your top three strategic goals for the upcoming year for the Federation? I know last year, I believe you said the theme was more of launching leaders, but but I also would love to understand, and I'm sure many women that are listening to the call would love to know what are your top three strategic goals for the upcoming year? We are already in October, but for the next 2023, what are the three strategic yeah. goals for the upcoming year? Well, a top goal is membership. And that's an ongoing goal, always. We had 65,000 members in 2021 with over 1,200 clubs throughout the country. We are closing in on that number again, building membership 
of course, there's a lot of objectives that you have to have to create um, at the ability to bring in more members. And that's, you know, that's all part of it as well. But all over the country, women are organizing new clubs and more members, that means more educated Republican voters. So we're working hard on that. We, I think we're up to about 69 new clubs. I'm encouraging the state presidents to, you know, reach out. And if uh, women want to be part of a new club, then help them get that started. And so we're working really hard on membership. Visibility is another goal. How many times do you hear that we're the best kept secret? But you also hear that Republican women are the backbone of the party. You hear from our candidates that they couldn't have won a campaign without them. But on the flip side, I hear from women who never knew there was a Republican women's organization until I brought it up. Just two weeks ago, I was in downtown Alexandria at a little boutique and I started a conversation with the employee there. And she said, you are kidding me. You have a Republican women's group? She had no idea. We exchanged cards. This happens all the time. I know it happens to some of you as well. So visibility is really important. She was so excited to hear that there's chapters in Virginia. Thanks to the foresight of our immediate past president and Shockett, we have a studio. That's one of the things we're doing for visibility. Uh, we have a Republican Women podcast. We're also providing programs nationwide via Zoom we're re that are reaching our members and our non-members. Those are some of the ways we're getting out there. And of course, I am traveling all over the country whenever I am invited and any opportunities like this opportunity tonight, any media opportunities, I am saying yes, yes, yes. So working hard for that visibility. And number three, of course, is fundraising. We want to provide the best resources. We want to keep our programs affordable for our members. So we need to raise funds. So we're a membership driven organization, but we also have our Regent donor program. And there are two levels of giving and anyone can join, husbands, members, non-members. And this funds important projects like our Federation Fund, which is a grant program for women clubs and states that wanna do a special project. So if anyone's interested in the Regent Fund, I'm giving an ad for that. All they need to do is call the office and I'll put them in touch with our coordinator of donor relations and they can find out more. So those are the three basics, but of course, we're working hard on campaigns. We're working hard on education and empowerment. I think Eileen, I really like what, what you said. I mean, instead of just saying that, yes, I want to increase more members. I think I really like the fact that you said, I want to increase members because it means that you're getting people engaged, right? I mean, instead of just increasing the members for what? It means that you're increasing the membership. Yeah, to get more engagement from more members means more engaged Republican voters. I think bottom line is uh, if you don't win, if you don't have more voters, what good is members for? Yeah. So I think that's the best part. And visibility, you're 100% right. If you don't have that visibility. But I mean, um, uh, but I uh, kudos to all of you. And uh, I, I told you before the call too. and shock it. I mean, typical New Yorker, love her to death. <laughs> um, uh, I think she's really uh, puts a spark <laughs> everywhere she goes. Yeah. Uh, I think visibility is a big deal. Um, I mean, uh, in spite of all of the great leaderships that we have, uh, uh, we just uh, don't, uh, some people still don't know that Republican uh, clubs do exist and visibility is important and we can't do anything without money. So fundraising is, uh, is the key, right? <laughs> so uh, Eileen, I'm going to talk more about fundraising on how to actually, especially when it comes to female candidates, how do we raise more money and stuff. But I do want to come uh, ask you a little more about region program. I know VFRW, our own club too, we try to kind of talk a little more about region program and try to get uh, people engaged. Can you help us explain what are the benefits of being part of region program? Well, the main benefit is that you're donating to a wonderful organization and contributing. And um, if you, it, it's your choice, but when you give to the uh, Regents program, you can um, ask that 10% of the money that you contribute be used for our Federation Fund. And like I said, that is our grant program where if a state has a special project they wanna do, we will help fund it. Um, 
yeah, so the, um, the Regent program, there are some perks too. If you, I mean, and you don't have, like I said, you don't have to be a member. You, maybe you just want to give and that's that. But if you are one of our members and you attend our board meetings, we do have events at our board meetings and they're lots of fun. And they're an opportunity. When I first became a Regent, it was an opportunity to just meet with a smaller group of women and get to know them and enjoy, you know, a nice reception or a special guest. And it, it's a lot of fun too. Absolutely. And also, uh, Eileen, you also have other programs such as Armed Services Fund, Federation Fund, and many more. Are there any other programs that you would like to highlight which you think are just noble, right? I mean, yeah. um, I know NFRW has plenty of those programs. Yeah, well, one that we're um, I'm really proud of right now is that the NFRW is partnering with the, Re partnering with the Republican National Committee on the Republican Civics Project. And the RNC opens centers in key areas of the country. They are assisting legal immigrants who are studying for their citizenship test. Mm -hmm. And they asked us to partner with them. And I think this is a great way to develop relationships with them and share our Republican values. So Republican women can volunteer to help these people that wanna become citizens with their American citizenship test. And it's an opportunity to just to develop, like I said, these relationships. The other uh, program I'm really excited about this year is the Youth Outreach Committee. We have an active chair and vice chair, and they are reaching out to every state and asking them to appoint a youth outreach chair. They've developed a blueprint for youth outreach, and it also helps that they are both 18 and 28 years old. They are our future. So those are two, you know, we've got a lot of things going on. And of course, there's the, you know, our, our um, campaign and all that we're doing for campaigns. I, Eileen, I think youth outreach program, I mean, God bless you. I think that is something we absolutely need to develop. I mean, if you go to, I mean, one thing that I usually tell any club is that you got to sponsor them. Uh, I, I mean, our president, bless her heart, uh, Janet War, uh, came up with an idea of like not only do scholarship once, but uh, sponsor a youth for, um, to be part of each and every club. I think we need them. They need us. We need to grow them and mentor them. Um, down the road, they are going to be our future leaders and we need to, and also they have a tough time in colleges and universities. So if we don't mentor them to be great leaders, they can definitely not stand up for our values and principles. And thank you for doing that. I mean, you were a great mom. You definitely brought up your kids to be Republicans. So you, you are the best person to kind of uh, mentor those young people. So yeah. thank you for leading that. Yeah, well, and you're right. It really is a tough road in these colleges if you're if you're a young Republican, even being able to find a group of college Republicans. And I was talking to a young lady the other day, and she feels like right now she's the only Republican in her college. So okay. we need to support her. She's a Republican woman. And I think you make such an excellent point that we should also support them financially and help them out because you know, if we're having a luncheon and they're able to come to that, they may not be able to afford it like, um, you know, the rest of us can do. So. Absolutely. We just need to sponsor them, basically. Yes. Yeah. Sponsor. sponsor them and invite them. So, uh, Eileen, I know things are changing right now, but um, for most part, I'm sure being in the role that you are in, you, you, you notice that women are running, but really not winning all the time or even 50% of the time, according to the stats. Um, I say I enjoy stats. I go by uh, stats. I mean, that's what I do in my work life too. Uh, most often than not, they lose in primaries. I mean, if you're really looking at nationwide stats, do you think women face different set of challenges? You've been in leadership roles through your life. You were a public school teacher. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, they're campaigning hard. I mean, I ran a race. I mean, I, I, I still think I gave my best, but I just think I didn't do a great job of running for a new year. I think all women candidates or any candidate for that matter should just really do their best running for a new year if they're really serious about running. But do they, do you really think they should be strategizing differently to win? I mean, as a women leader, what do you think? Uh, what is your well, message for women leaders? Well, you know, we still see that men primarily are in elected office. We're still, you know, working towards, I think what you say, they say that glass ceiling. And uh, women have to prove themselves more because we are seen as managing households and families and everything else. 
And I think sometimes this is just me. It's not anything from polls or stats, but I think they may look at a man candidate and say, oh, it's going to be easier for them. So we have to prove ourselves more to them and show that, yes, we can manage it. We can manage our family. We can manage in Congress. And we need to put out those examples of women that have, like my Congresswoman from Washington State, Kathy McMorris Rogers, she was a young lady that started out as an aide and was single at that time. She became a state representative. She ran for Congress. She's had all three of her children during her time in Congress. And um, her oldest child has Down syndrome. She manages all of that and continues and is successful. I think we can. We have many examples of that. We just have to show, uh, you know, the rest of the world that women can do it, and um, you know, and they can do it sometimes better than men. Uh, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, you you're able to do it, so why not? Yeah, we can I mean, do it. You know, Myra Flores, she's a, she's a, um, an example out of Texas. She beat a Democrat incumbent in a blue district. And yeah. so it can be done. But I also heard that she was out doorbelling. She really reached out to her voters. So I do have to say, whether you're a man or a woman candidate, you have to do the work too. And it's, yeah. and it's hard work. And sometimes you have to do it more than once. Because if you're in a particular district where it is a little bit blue, you may have to step up and run again and you know not just give up the first time i 100 percent agree with you but eileen let me ask you i mean right now in virginia eileen we have great women candidates we have uh, i mean we have great male candidates too uh but uh, just speaking about women we have jen uh kiggins uh, we uh, kiggins we have uh, yesley vega i mean uh, phenomenal candidates we also have uh, jim miles we have hung Kao. i mean i am psyched about all of these candidates uh, but i know you brought up about fundraising aspect let me ask you about that question too. I know women candidates struggle with fundraising aspect. Do you think uh, does NFRW have any programs to train women candidates on how to fundraise? I can speak for myself. Um, uh, if somebody is going to ask me to say, hey, Shri, do you want to run again? I fear nothing. I don't I don't fear about working hard. I love door knocking. I love connecting uh, with people. I mean, I know we, um, I, we, we have the skill set, but when it comes to uh, fundraising, raising, I back off, right? So I know most women candidates do that. So does NFRW have any programs to train women candidates to on how to fundraise? Or uh, do you guys have any channels to help them out? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. In fact, we have our um, campaign school, and it covers all facets. Fundraising is a very important of it, part of it. And um, that uh, went for 16 weeks this year. It was virtual. We also will go into states and do the campaign school, but now with so many people having access to Zoom, we had a virtual school. We also recorded it. So if you weren't able to attend, then you can go and, um, and purchase. It was very, very reasonable. And we're going to do one last follow-up on our campaign school. So I, yeah, I'd urge ladies if they're thinking about running, they can, they can also still purchase the, and if they just want the fundraising part, but you know, I get it when it comes to fundraising. I always thought it was fun if I was working for a candidate to call up and get in and to ask for money, but to ask for money for myself, it's difficult, but like they say, that's what you have to do. So yeah, we definitely have those opportunities if, um, you know, if women are interested in learning more about fundraising. Eileen, it's a, it's a very nice to hear that you have all kinds of options. You have the campaign school and you have the citizenship school. I mean, these are the things I think um, Republicans ha ought to be doing for decades and they have not. And it's good to see that they're stepping up and doing it at this point because these are, the, these are our weaknesses. It's just really nice to know that we are closing the gap on our weaknesses. And uh, those are the things that uh, we really need to close our gaps. Uh, once we do that, uh, now we can't we can be beaten down anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to add too. I forgot to add that this year I thought it was important that we update our campaign manual, and so it's been updated for 2022. And so now it has even more ideas on fundraising, and also all the social media that candidates need. 
Excellent. So, um, Eileen, I'm also on the leadership role of the local GOP unit, which is Fairfax uh, GOP, uh, and this platform, Conversations That Count, is uh, happening on Fairfax GOP unit. And by the way, our chair is extremely supportive of us doing this. I'm also part of 11th Congressional Unit, uh, uh, who supports our candidates very much, and the Women's Club, I just told you, on the state board, which is VFRW. So I tend to kind of uh, be aligned with all of this. But I do notice that all Although we have a great working relationship, there is room for opportunity in the alignment or standardization of work. Um, as an outsider, I feel like should we all be working in sync with each other or um, is this something that uh, should we have a different vision or is it okay not to be in sync? Uh, or because we all have a unique role to play and should we be working independently? Because from an outside perspective who is very much new to mm -hmm. all of this, um, is it okay not to be in sync and work independently or should we, we be in sync and work together? This is just uh, um, uh, not being, uh, not knowing the intrinsicies of everything, uh, just trying to understand how um, working together is good or working independently is good. What, what do you think? I think, I think a little bit of both. I think so, you know, the Republican women's mission is to educate and empower women. That's not the same mission as the GOP. But we were we were started originally because the with the RNC National Committee woman saw the importance of the Republican women. So it's um, it's a little bit of both. We need to work together on things, and we do. Like I said, we joined forces with the RNC on this American Civics at our fall board meeting and our spring board meeting. We have the RNC come in and give us the latest and the greatest. Uh, our campaign committee is coordinating with the campaigns and our state federations to promote the candidates. The women are being trained on the phone apps that the uh, candidates um, use for their campaigns to get out the vote. We're working with the RNC on that. So it's a focus of what we do, continuing to do that well, but also cooperating and working with the, with the GOP when our goals mesh together, if that makes sense. <laughs> Oh, that, that makes absolute sense. I think uh, we have our strengths and they have their strengths. Uh, we also don't want to be working or duplicating our efforts, uh, wow. but we also can come together when we need to come together and align the efforts when we need to align the efforts. I think that makes perfect sense. I think as an outsider, it's kind of nice to know when, when do we come together and when do we just kind of work independently so we're not duplicating our efforts. Yes. Yeah. Yes, like like when it comes to fundraising, the Republican women, um, you know, will be working on campaigns, but the GOP is able to raise funds, but we can certainly put our funds in to the kitty and help them with that. So that's, you know, that's one way that we work together. And the GOP plans, they have their Super Saturdays, they're getting out and doorbelling. We don't have to replicate that. We can join with what they're already doing, and we should be. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that, that makes complete sense. And thanks for clarifying that. Um, so Eileen, let me also ask this question to you. As a woman of color, I can't help observe, I always say this, uh, um, that we ought to be focused on getting diverse members of our community within our clubs, especially living in Nova. Uh, probably if you're living in other parts of the country, we may not notice this as much, but living in Northern Virginia, I realized that uh, at every level and at every club level, membership level, leadership level, we just really need to have diverse members of our community uh, be part of a decision-making process. Um, as a leader at the helm of the organization, is this something that you look at or do you see it um, uh, that we need to have some younger members of the organization um, or do you see that diversity is an issue do you want to uh, do you uh, are you taking any active steps currently or are there any outreach programs going on what are your thoughts on that yeah no I think it's very important but I, what I found over the years is you can't just say you want to do it in your club you really have to engage and find ways to reach out in the community. And when it's been successful is when ladies recognize that there was in Oklahoma some years ago and also in Texas, and I think they're continuing with this, they had where they would go out into the community. community. And I think our Caring for America, our Armed Services Project, the American Civics Project, 
being out in the community, these give us opportunities. And when we are there, we need to be talking about the Republican women. We need to be welcoming women. We need to be sponsoring women. And that's how we'll do it. We don't have a diversity committee per se, but our youth outreach has made that part of what they're doing. And our membership committee said it's all inclusive. Everything they're doing is about how do we reach members, whether you know women of color, uh, women, whatever. So the way, I think the most effective way is for us to get out into the community with our committees and do it that way instead of sitting in our clubs and hoping that they are going to come join. Yeah, yeah. No, that that's uh, good to know because I think being inclusive is a good thing. I think I know we are doing that at a local level. I pride upon being in our own uh, club where we make that as a priority. And I'm not only kind of talking about just having women of color, but I think that when I talk about diversity, I call about young young women, older women. I think. Uh, of uh, people of all experiences. Uh, um, I, I think we're uh, looking at um, uh, every aspect of uh, diversity. Yeah. It's just always nice to have different thought processes going on. Yeah, It's just really nice to be in uh, a circle where we have different thoughts and ideas. Uh, I think that's where the best uh, vision comes into picture. So uh, Eileen, I know you go across the country and then you're doing um, uh, a great job going and getting the vision out there. What are some of the unique things or best practices that you think uh, are going around that you think uh, some uh, some of us can adapt? I always say the more you're out there, you're like, oh, I've seen that best practice that I think some uh, uh, other states can adapt. I mean, have you seen something that you think uh, are uh, nuggets that you can share around here? You know, like I, like I said before, uh, those clubs that reach out into their community with their with their projects, that's a great way to do it. And they encourage their women to talk up, um, you know, the Republican Women's Club. And they, you know, they don't keep it a secret. They also make an, an, a point, just like I'm making a point at the national level, the state presidents can do the same thing and the local clubs can do the same thing to get their message out there, to write articles and op-eds, to get on a radio program and get their voice out there. One of the best practices is um, that, that I think is when I see the Republican Women's Clubs really cooperating with their Republican Party as well. And that's great. And I know it doesn't always happen. <laughs> and sometimes you have to wait for the next leadership but we need to be gracious and we need to work with our parties because we all have those same goals. I think uh, I think you coming from media experience, I think you I talked about it in your bio. I think you used to do that. I think that really helped. Um, I mean, I, I didn't even think about it. I think state presidents or executive board going on the radio and talking about Republican clubs or writing op-eds and talking about Republican clubs. I think that is, I mean, I've never seen that happen. Uh, I think that's such a best practice, uh, um, yeah. uh, just talking about c in city councils, talking in school board, uh, uh, talking in supervisor, and just telling that uh, I'm from Republican club, uh, I think that people will hear more about them. Uh, I think that's a great uh, practice. Uh, no, thanks for sharing that. I hope more yeah. people will listen to that. Uh, and they don't have to be perfect at it. It's practice. And it happens, it happens kind of naturally. If they're a mom that's really passionate and they start speaking out at school board meetings, then it's easier for them to do that. And if they don't like talking on a radio show or something like that, they can write an op-ed piece, you know, yeah. and be brave there. So it's just taking those steps and reaching out. I had um, a club president that was just fantastic. She multiplied our small club. Her strategy was to carry in her purse our brochures when we had the brochures in those days. And whether she was standing in the grocery line or wherever she was, she was talking about Republican politics and if uh, Republican women. And if someone didn't care, then she stopped talking about it. But she found so many new members doing that. She wasn't afraid. 
Absolutely. And Eileen, I know our Loudoun County moms, the Republican moms did a great job increasing our membership by doing just that. Uh, I know Virginia Beach uh, Republican moms are very active as well. So I think that those best practices are kind of happening here as well. But uh, it's just refreshing to know about op-eds and uh, um, going on radio and just doing those uh, neat little things that could literally take us to the next level, which is very much needed. Otherwise, if you're going to be doing the same things year after year, we are really not going to grow. We got to grow. I mean, that's where... Um, that's how we take our clubs to the next level. So Eileen, as you know, we are in the early voting season already. I mean, who would have thought November comes so quickly in Virginia elections are every, every year we go through election season. Um, uh, we have hardworking volunteers here, uh, precinct captains. You were once a precinct captain. Any message to our club presidents and hardworking ground volunteers and these uh, women volunteers that are out there that look up to you and you le your leadership during this crucial period? Do you have any message for them? <laughs> oh, I'm, I know they're already working hard, but just keep working hard and work harder and know that it'll soon be over and November 8th will be here and it'll be too late. So now is the time to get involved and to do all you can. And also get involved in those opportunities, not only with getting them out the vote and, um, you know, and supporting your candidates, but also in observing elections and monitoring them and making sure that we have fair elections after yeah. doing all this work. Uh, that, that is the key. Um, Eileen, I'm sure you're aware our Attorney General Jason Miar has created Election Integrity Unit, which we are psyched about. There's a lot of momentum going on about parental rights here. Um, I also want to kind of uh, congratulate you for doing Faith Coalition. I think that's another one that you kind of have created under your leadership. Uh, we, we get emails and I, as a corresponding secretary uh, under our leadership uh, president, Susan Cobb, I send emails to my own uh, membership asking them to join Faith Coalition. So a lot of good things are coming under your leadership that we pass it on to our members, uh, asking them to participate in our Faith Coalition. So lots of stuff happening in Virginia as well. I know NFRW's uh, 42nd biennial convention is not until another year. Uh, it's happening in Oklahoma City around this time next year. I've been to one of those. I think it's a great place to network with women from across the country and prepare for upcoming elections, especially next year. It's going to be exciting because 2024 will be coming up. Um, anything new happening uh, this time around? I mean, is there a theme for next year? Well, we haven't, we haven't developed our theme yet, but we're getting close. We just finished our fall board meeting. So now we're working on this, but we do hope to bring presidential candidates because it will be 2023 and it'll be, you know, just, it, it'll be right around the corner to 2024. Oklahoma is a red state. They are promising that we can expect to hear from some great Republican leaders there. So we're excited about that. And of course, we're going to provide our workshops, our excellent workshops and our training for women. We pull in some from the Leadership Institute and others, and uh, we can always use any ideas that anybody has for, you know, for our workshops. So there will be more coming, uh, you know, keep a lookout on our website or in the Capital Connection, and you'll start to hear more early spring next year. Thank you. Eileen, I know Florida is going through a devastating uh, hurricane. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, are you guys doing any fundraising, anything that uh, we as women Republican clubs uh, can we do to help through NFRW? Do you have any efforts underneath uh, going on that we can contribute? Yes, yes. So I talked to President Marisol Kovitz, who is the president in Florida, and I asked her what she wanted, what would be the best strategy Governor DeSantis has set up a fund and a website. So I don't have that off the top of my head, but we um, that is in our Capital Connection. It is on our NFRW website, and you can click on that to either volunteer or donate. And the best thing that they say is to be able to donate if you're out of state, and then they can put those resources to the best use. So um, you, and, and it's also on our Facebook page too, where anybody can find it and click on it. I'm sorry, I don't have the link off the top of my head. Right now. 
No, no worries, but you encourage us to go to NFRW website to kind of pull out that information. Yes, yeah, or the, or the NFRW Facebook, or if you get the Capital Connection, it just went out today and you just click on the link. And that was from uh, the Florida President Marisol Kobach said that that was the best thing that we could do now is to go to that site to give. So uh, Eileen, while we are on Capital Connections, two things that I do want our uh, folks and viewers to know is Capital Connections is a newsletter that comes out every week, right? Yes. Uh, it's a newsletter that comes out. And that newsletter has uh, very comprehensive information. I know some of our club members um, kind of ask about that. Is that where they can also enter the campaign information, volunteer information, and so on and yes. so forth? Yes. And if anybody isn't getting that, and I run into that sometimes, that means that they haven't set up their email properly or whatever, they can just call our office and our membership manager will help them set up their account. Because I do run into ladies sometimes that have been members for a while and they say, I'm not getting it, but it's sent out to everybody. It's sent out to, we have all of your emails and we send it out to you every week. And it's just chock full of information and links that they can click on for other things that they need. And that is one thing that I tell our club members too, saying that the only way you can get engaged is by getting these newsletters. Otherwise it's easier to assume that you're not getting communications or you're not engaged enough because yeah. you don't know what's going on out there. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. We have, um, if we have all these candidate Zooms coming up, this Sunday is gonna be Dr. Oz and Lisa Scheller out of Pennsylvania. And uh, the information to register for that Zoom is in our Capital Connection. And I'm not sure if it's on the website. Um, it possibly should be on Facebook too. So those things are happening, but if you're not reading the Capital Connection, then you're missing it. You're missing exactly. a lot of opportunity and a lot of events that are going on that you can you know, be part of in your living room. You don't even have to leave. Exactly. So Eileen, what races are you excited about for this year? Oh, I'm excited about all of them. Okay. <laughs> and I just, I just had attended a, a meeting with um, the Republican National Lawyers Association. We had just heard at our, at our fall board meeting, the latest and greatest on the polls. I went to this meeting and things are really looking up for Republicans. I know we have to do our work. We have to make sure elections are fair. We have to get out the vote, but it's looking very good for us. It's looking for very good for us in the house. It's probably about you know um, neck and neck with the Senate. But um, well, one there's one race that's pretty special to me. So in Washington State, which is my home state, we are hoping to retire Patty Murray. And I was just a young woman working on campaigns when she was elected. And she said she was the mom in tennis shoes. Well, we have a mom in tennis shoes and Tiffany Smiley who is running for US Senate and she is fantastic. So she is a nurse. I think you probably are aware of that. Uh, she helped her husband through the um, whole VA and um, stood up for him going back to Washington, DC. She's a strong, amazing woman. So I'm excited about all the races, but that's really special to me if we can retire Patty Murray for Tiffany Smiley. Uh, I can see why it is so special to you. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, I hope I hope your dream comes true. So Eileen, as we're coming to the end of the conversation, I wanna end by asking who is that one woman that you look up to either from personal front or from political front? Uh, well, you know, you said it's your mom. Yeah. Uh, I always said that one of the women that I admired the most yeah. is my mom. I think yeah. I kind of told my viewers in the past, she was barely educated back home in India, but she ensured that I received the best education in respect of the challenges. Uh, and again, I come from, I'm an immigrant. I came from India and uh, definitely it was a patriarch, uh, patriarchal society. And one of the dreams she always had is that I speak English. <laughs> she oh. said, only if my daughter can speak English, uh, she will have a better life. <laughs> so um, I hope I, spe I speak conversational English and she would be proud of me. <laughs> So I definitely look up to her the most. So uh, I, I ask this to every women leader saying that, who do you look up to the most? Yeah. Well, my, my, mine is my mom as well. She always encouraged me. She believed in me. 
she expected me to excel and be a woman of integrity. And my mom had a scholarship to art school, but she didn't take advantage of it. It was just a different time for women then. But she was a woman that was always learning and sharing her knowledge with us. And she was an example of a strong, loving woman. So that's, that's my example. And that is the woman I look up to still. And she's still with us today. She's 87 years old and she's just a spunky lady and I love her. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, thank you. I hope she's watching this and I'm sure she'll watch if she's watching this. Uh, good for you, Eileen. Eileen, I thank you for joining. I know you are managing hundreds and hundreds of clubs. Uh, we thank you for uh, spending time in Alexandria. Uh, you should be living in Washington, but you chose to kind of live in Alexandria to kind of uh, take care of all these clubs around. I see you everywhere. I think recently I saw you at a Catholic meeting in uh, Washington, D.C. I know you travel a lot. Um, you just finished your state board meeting. Uh, I'm sure the meeting went great. I uh, thank you for uh, spending the time with us, spreading the vision around throughout the country, aligning us, showing us the vision and making sure the strategic goals are set. Uh, I enjoyed the conversation. I really enjoyed when you laid out the goals about membership, visibility and fundraising. I mean, those are our weaknesses and uh, it's really nice that you are outreaching to uh, not only um, youth, but also trying to increase the diversity in the club, trying to ensure that you're reaching out to citizenship clubs. And one thing that I want to highlight is about um, uh, walkathons, women's walkathon with RNC. I think you participated in oh. one or two of those. So these are all the things that I think um, women's club and RNCs have missed in the past decade. So it's nice to see that we are acknowledging that and bringing those back into us. Um, so I thank you for joining us on the conversation. This discussion was very valuable. I hope you found it valuable as well. Any last minute thoughts, Eileen, before we end the conversations? No, I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think your mom would be very proud of your English. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. Viewers, um, this is Eileen Sobjack, National Federation of Republican Women President, uh, a great leader. I love that. I'm shocked. Now I like Eileen too. It's just really, really a proud moment for me being part of Executive Board of Virginia Federation and uh, my own great leader, Sue, uh, President uh, Susan Cobbs, and uh, my own Liber Liberty Republican Women's Club, Janet War, but just belonging to these great women's club around here and being part of uh, such uh, such empowered women i think we need all of these republican women i think any candidate that stay that uh, is on the stage would always say that uh, they would never win without having these uh, women the women clubs are the backbone for the republican party and the candidates and we continue to put the boots on and start working hard day in and day out to ensure that our candidates win so congratulations to all the women and we'll continue to keep working hard. Viewers, as you all know, National Hispanic Heritage Month is annually celebrated from September 15th to October 15th in the United States. And we recognize the contributions and influence of Hispanic Americans at Fairfax GOP and 11th Congressional District. On conversations that count, I'll have Reverend Jonathan Avinado, and executive, he's the executive director at National Alliance of Hispanic Pastors, and also Pastor Cosio next week to discuss about history, culture, and achievements of uh, Hispanic Americans. We also will talk about why U.S. Hispanic conservatism is surging. Hope you can tune in next Friday, October 7th at 5.30 p.m. to listen to this important co conversation. Until then, have a wonderful day weekend. Stay dry if possible. And uh, God bless you all. God bless America. And thank you all for tuning in.